Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide. Today I'm going to be wrapping up this whole font journey and I'm going to be doing some font variants, fonts and font variants on the Quirk Logic Papier to see what kind of results do we get and how does the font variant uh, thing function. So let's check it out. All right, so I uploaded the template and here it is, the YouTube tech, uh, example, font example. And let's see how does this open up on the PC, it looked normal. So let's see how does this open up here. Yep, everything good. So unlike the Supernote, so far the Supernote is the only one that had an issue of interpreting this type of a PDF. Everybody else seems to be able to handle it well. So now let's pick out a thick brush. Let's see how thick is this? Oh, too thick. Let's uh, slightly less thick. Okay, not the thickest brush. Let's try this. Yep, this seems good. And now let's fill it up. Okay, so this is filled out, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a copy of this one and I'm going to fill it out, um, yeah, let's say three more times so that I have four variations of the same type of a thingy because I would like to also test out the template variations or the font variations uh, while testing all this out. So I'm going to be doing that, but via the use of magic of editing, let's transport ourselves directly into the calligrapher portal. Three, two, one. All right, I made four variations of the same template thingy on the Quirk Logic Papier. So now let's do that. And this is the first time I'm doing it. I'm not sure if the free version of the account can do that. I think it can, but it has like a limited amount of uh, variant templates. For now, I'm starting with uploading template one and then just checking out the results to begin with. And then I'm gonna also attempt to uh what well that's clearly wrong um because the pdf is normal so why is it being difficult i'm gonna disable automatically clean templates maybe maybe that's what's confusing it we'll see no and definitely the template, the PDF that I get uh, most definitely has everything here. So these are the exported ones that I get from Quirk Logic Papier. And these were emailed to me. So I used the option email to me, um, but it's not recognizing, yeah, it's just recognizing the first page yeah just the first page for some reason okay hmm. all right i think i figured out maybe what it was but most importantly i managed to make it work so i couldn't get the pdfs to work at all regardless of how i exported them so I tried exporting or sending his email, exporting to Google Drive and all that kind of stuff. And I always got the same results. So when I exported as PNGs, individual PNGs worked normally. And um, yeah, then I just went ahead and used the PNG to PDF to kind of uh, combine the exported PNGs into a single PDF. And then that works. What happens with the format and why this is happening? I don't know. It's certainly an inconvenience, but it definitely is possible to actually use. So now that I've uh, managed to fix that part and make the PDFs that work, now I have these guys here. So I have Quirk Logic 1, 2, 3, 4 variants. And those are the ones that I'm going to be attempting to upload. So now let's, uh, let's do that. 
So I'm going to first choose one. And this is from Documents QL. So this should work. At least the test version worked. Hopefully this will work too. There we go. Now we're talking. So this works. And now it says this is the part that I'm interested in because I want to check that out as well. So to add new variants, upload another template after adding these characters. You will then have the choice to select create variants. So I need to go add characters to your font and then I should go upload another one. But before I do, I want to check out the results, compare the results that we had from before. And these are looking good. So they're looking good and fine. We'll see how they convert because this is just still the kind of scan thing. So now I'm going to go upload template and I should be able to upload variant 2. All right, so now it has uh, create variants, overwrite existing characters or create variants. So I want to create variants and this is the variant one. I'm going to add them. Cool. And now you have these numbers on top. So it has two variants. So all of them have two variants. Let's see how many can I do. I have four of them and I don't know if the free uh, account supports that or not. We'll see. All right, I'm going to add characters. So I have three. Some of the glyphs have more variants than your current plan allows. Whenever you create a font, only a subset within this limit will be included in font. Okay, so I believe that we can only have two variants in the free uh, version and in the pro version, you can obviously have more. So I'm just gonna keep it as it is now and then I'll see what happens. So I should go to build font. So now when I'm in build font, you'll see that randomized characters is turned on because we have the subsets or subset variants. So I'm just going to name this and go build. And then we see what we get. Okie dokie, we have these. What do they look like? They look good, clean and crisp. Definitely clean and crisp to my eyes, but I still prefer the end result that I got from uh, books. Maybe it was just how I wrote things. I'm not sure, but this definitely works. So now let's see how does the variant work. So let's go. Well, clearly. Hmm. Well, I'm not actually seeing the variant. There we go. So it's just a little bit weird. Okay, so it does work, but I don't know how the algorithm works and how often it will uh, change it or not. And obviously with just two, it's not the best. However, the variants seem to yeah, there we go. I think we have two different E's. Or s yeah, they seem different. Seem to be working fine and not seems. And I can only assume that fins fine. And I can only assume that with more variants we would get even more interesting results. Cool. So this definitely works. And I'm very, very happy that I now have this opportunity and this option. So this is super, super cool and super, super fun. All right, so definitely not the smoothest experience that I was uh, expecting or the smoothest results that I was expecting from the Quirk Logic Papier. Um, as you've seen, the problem is the writing is not a problem at all. However, getting the PDFs from the uh, workbook format that it is, PDF that it receives, it converts it to a workbook. And then once that workbook is converted back to a PDF, 
something goes amiss. My suspicion is that the converted resolution is too high, maybe, and then the system just kind of rejects it or just does the one page. I don't know, I haven't had time to investigate fully, but I am happy that I was able to find that workaround so that I can actually export as PNGs, collate those into a PDF and then that worked. So definitely not as streamlined experience as all three other platforms, so that's definitely a negative. Um, the results are great and they look really, really nice, but for some reason not as to my aesthetics at least, not as nice as the ones that I got on Books Note Air, which is certainly not something that I expected. I expected actually the Papier to give the best performance. So now that I've tested these, Books Note Air is definitely the winner or the books platform for sure. And Papier would have been the second place, it definitely is second place in the results, but it also has a negative point, which is that exporting process that it's not streamlined. So. For me, it's uh, a very strange situation where um, I'm happy that the Note Air is the best because that's great, that's my daily driver, but uh, it's a weird thing that I can't really decide between second, third and fourth place simply because, um, yeah, Papier, Super Note A5X and the Remarkable 2 each have positives and negatives and they're all different positives and negatives. So for me, it's like only the winner is the Note Air because that one just does everything right and smooth. And all of these are good, they work, but they all have individual and different positives and negatives. So yeah, that's something that you have to see what works best for your needs and what you like or don't like. I hope that you enjoyed this whole series and exploration of how to create your fonts on different platforms and yeah, what to expect from different platforms and from different approaches um, on this subject. I definitely enjoyed it. It's a whole new thing for me because uh, yeah, in earlier days it was a huge, huge hassle to create your own fonts and I was kind of hopeful maybe things have advanced and they surely have. So this is definitely fun. This is definitely something I'm going to be using quite a lot on my own free time because it's just fun. I hope you enjoy creating a lot of fonts for your projects or for yourself. It doesn't matter. Just remember to have fun and to enjoy what you're doing. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Ding the notification bell to get notified when new videos come out on my deep guide. Stay safe, stay healthy and see you in the next video. Bye!